Hello! If you're a new viewer to my channel, welcome, and if you're returning, welcome back. I am kickstarting a new playlist on Flask, which is a Python framework for front-end. Flask recently is a very hot topic. A lot of applications are using Flask to deploy a front-end that is connected to a back-end. That back-end can be your LLM, large language model, can be a machine learning model that you have built and you want to deploy, or just a simple sign-in, register, blog post, whatever your web application will be. So stay tuned for this playlist. There will be multiple videos coming on and showing you very detailed step-by-step -step tutorials. So what I've got on my screen is a web application from DigitalOcean. So it actually tells you how to make a web application, but I'm not really trying to show you that. I'm trying to show you what I'm going to be teaching you through in the series of videos on Flask will help you to create something like this. You can have a login page. You can have a sign up page. You can have multiple tabs that allows you to go into, say, products or to the solutions area. And don't think about this only as a simple website because you can put a lot of the things in the back end. You can also deploy a chatbot, as you can see from Commonwealth Bank of Australia's website. So you can do that. Or you can have a model, a machine learning model that has been deployed somewhere on the cloud or on premise. And then you can build a web application to communicate to that model, which is very cool. So what I have here, there is probably a mortgage calculator model somewhere sitting in the world or on the cloud. And I can say, I want to borrow $500,000. I want to pay back in 30 years. Tell me how much I can borrow or how much my repayments will be. All right. Now that we're kind of done with the introduction, why Flask is such a big and important part of our full stack development. And I would like to emphasize these days, companies are looking for full stack engineers, AI, ML, full stack. So I'll be showing you everything based on Jupyter Lab. If you haven't seen my video about Jupyter Labs and how to start them, the link is up the top right. But my assumption is you know what Jupyter Lab is and you know that Python has been installed on your machine. But the installation link will be down in the description. What we will do is we will use the terminal from Jupyter Lab. You might want to use terminal from your Mac OS or your Windows PowerShell. That doesn't really matter. But what I want you to know is that, that you can use a terminal from Jupyter Lab. Let me just remind you that wherever you open the terminal will be the route that you're pointing at. If I'm pointing at YouTube Flash tutorial and I press terminal, terminal will open in that path. Let me show you. So when I go present working directory or print working directory, it will be looking at that volume, that external hard YouTube and Flask tutorial, which is here. So just be aware, wherever you open the terminal on Jupyter Lab, it will be pointing at this path, which is very cool. Let me just clear the screen. Okay, that's awesome. Now I've got a terminal running here and I want to make a new directory and call it tutorial number one. I will go ahead and say make directory flask tutorial number one. Very shortly, there will be a folder here called flask tutorial number one. This terminal is looking at the flask tutorial and not flask tutorial number one. If you want to go to flask tutorial number one, you either do CD flask tutorial number one. And then when you look at the print working directory, it will be looking at Flask Tutorial 1. You can also deploy a chatbot, as you can see from Commonwealth Bank of Australia's website. So you can do that. Or you can have a model, a machine learning model, that has been deployed somewhere in Australia, that has been deployed somewhere on the cloud or on premise. And then you can build a web application to communicate to that model, which is very cool. So what I have here, there is probably a mortgage calculator model somewhere sitting in the world or on the cloud. And I can say, I want to borrow $500,000. I want to pay back in 30 years. Tell me how much I can borrow or how much my repayments will be. So back to web applications and Flask. Flask is a very robust way of building web applications to communicate to the back end and also to the user. So that's a brilliant tool to have. Or you could go ahead and open a new terminal again, because then it will be looking at this path. If I do that and show you PWD, you will see that it's looking at Flask tutorial number one. So a bit of a housekeeping, that's your terminal that is pointing at your Flask tutorial number one. What we really need to start with is already in the Flask website. If you go to Flask palette, palettesprojects.com, I'll, I'll put the link in, down in the description below. But what I want you to really go, go and copy is this code. So, and I will make a new file called hello.py. So let me go ahead, right click, and ask for a new file, call it hello.py. 
get rid of that text extension. And then you can see that it's a Python file. I will open this and I have copied the code from the website. I'll paste it here and go save. This is all you needed to do so far. But one thing you need to be aware of when you are calling a package from Python to be used, that needs to be installed. I'm not really sure if Flask is installed on your machine. If it is not, there are multiple ways you can do it. You can go to your terminal, go back to your terminal and go and say pip install Flask. That's all you need to do. I already have it installed. So I'm just going to clear the screen. Go ahead, do pip install Flask. You are making a Flask application. This is how you make a Flask application, by the way. You can ignore a lot of the syntax because as we continue, I will show you what every one of them means. So make an application from Flask. And then this is a decorator. Again, today, you don't really need to worry about decorators. I will show you what decorators are as we go on but you need a decorator to be able to run a web application using Flask. And this is how we call decorators in Flask. So at whatever app that you built above. This bit is quite important for you. This is the route that you will be running your application on. For example, let me show you this website. This website has got this route. So it goes to flask.palettesprojects.com. Then it goes to English language. 3.0.x tutorial and layout. This was a Flask application and we went to the back end. Every single one of these routes would be defined. So once you've got your decorator, you need a function that runs under that route. So say if I was to run a home page, I would add home to my route. And when I was checking my local host, I would check the home base. Let me go back, get rid of that home because I will produce a home tab later on. And I want to get rid of home for now. What does this function really do? This is a function called hello, and it will essentially print hello world on the screen of the web application. Okay, how do we really run and see this web, web application? First, let's save this. That's what I've done. Now, if you're on Mac, what you will need to do is to export flask underscore app equals your .py files name. So my .py file name is hello.py. If you're running this on Windows and you were using Windows PowerShell, you'll have to say set Flask app equals. I'm running on a Mac, I'll have to do export. So do that. And now all I need to do is go Flask run. If I print enter, and it will give me a hyperlink on the IP that I told you. So if I click on that one, you will see that I can see hello world printed up here. I want to show you something. I don't want to every time go to my terminal and do what I did. So export Flask app into something. Let me stop the server because as you can see, it is running and the website is up. And if I refresh it, it's already there because it's running. I need to stop this. So go control C. If you press control C, it will stop the application. If I refresh this, you will see that the application is gone. And if you don't want to do the export and then flask run every time, all you need to do is add a couple of lines of code. Double underscore name, double underscore equals double underscore main, double underscore app dot run. This will allow you to run application from terminal using just one command line. So let me save that. This time I'm going to use Python to run hello.py. This will create the link and you get to hello world. So this makes your life a bit easier. But then let's see if I can make this hello world into a bit of a bigger form. What I will do, I'll come back here to the hello.py file and I'll add h1, which is heading number one to hello world to see if I can make it a bit bigger. Let me just add h1 to this. If you don't know HTML language, that's okay. You don't have to really worry about that. We will go through every little bits and pieces to get you started on that one. So I just had it added heading one to hello world. You got to do it the way I have done. So just like that and just addition of a slash in front of h1 to close it. Let's just save that and refresh our application. What you will see is that it will not really change because the application is running on the previous format of hello.py. So what you need to do is to go control C to stop the server and you will have to run Python hello.py again to look at a new version. If I open that now, you will see that hello world has gone a bit bigger and you may wonder now, is it really practical that every time I need to stop the server and then run the server after the slightest change I have made to my file? Not really. Let me stop the server because I have to this time. I have stopped the server, clear the screen nice and tidy. Back here, all you need to do is to add debug equals true. 
if you do this every time you do not have to shut down the server and run it again let me save this one go back here and say python hello.py let's open the server again and you will see that yep it's running so this is the latest version of my server if i go back in hello pi hello.py make a change hello world how are you just a dummy thing save it and come here and refresh you will see that I can seamlessly integrate changes without really having to stop the server. The server can be running. The next thing and the last thing really for this video I want to show you is how to make more routes in your app. So let me delete that how are you from here. I will copy this and paste it down the bottom. I want to make a new page in my application, maybe my home page and call it my home page page yep that's good i can't really use the same function name trust me you will get an error but let me try i will save this and when i go back here and refresh you will see that mm -mm, no it's not going to really work because you can't use the same functions the functions have to be unique so let's go back here let's go and make sure we have stopped the server clear this screen and give this a better name i'm just going to call it home now if i go ahead and say python hello.py and I open that new link, you will see that I've got a hello world for the route page. And if I add the slash home, you will see that my home page. So I can go ahead and another page, call it probably my about page, if you like, and the about function. Let's give it a unique about page. I just want to make it a bit very visible for you so that you can see. So if I go back here, do again, change this to about and you will see that the about page has also been established. All right, I hope you enjoyed this Flask application tutorial number one. I'll help you to build a very sophisticated and attractive web application. So stay tuned, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm taking you through a big journey into becoming a full stack AI scientist, engineer, whichever you like. Thank you.